Chapter 4, Section 20, Multivariate Outlier Direction by Mahalanobis Distance, Part 2. In this section, you will learn how to compute Mahalanobis Distance by Python. Limitations of Outlier Direction by Mahalanobis Distance. And as an appendix, the determinant of the covariance matrix becomes zero when the variables are perfectly correlated. Now, let's calculate the Mahalanobis distance using Python. First, import NumPy and Pandas. Then, import distance from SciPy special module. This module contains functions for various distance calculations, including one that calculates the Mahalanobis distance. Next, create a dataset and make it into a data frame named DF. Now, let's get into the calculation process. First, we will implement the elements included in the formula. First, let's calculate the mean vector. Using DF mean, we can calculate the average of each column in the data frame, DF. It returns the result as a panda series object. Since mean function returns the result in panda series type, we use the values method to convert the result to a NumPy array. Next, let's compute the covariance matrix. Use T to transpose the data frame. By taking the transpose, the data points will be placed in rows and the variables will be placed in columns. It enables NP curve to properly compute the covariance matrix. This operation is not related to the transposition of the mean vector we have seen in the formula. So, do not confuse it with the transposition of the mean vector. Then, use the curve function in NumPy to compute the covariance matrix of the transpose data. Next, let's compute the inverse of the covariance matrix. Using NumPy's linear algebra inv function, we compute the inverse of the covariance matrix, curve underscore matrix. Then, create an empty list to store the Mahalanobis distances. Using a for loop, we calculate the Mahalanobis distance for each data point. Set for loop to iterate for the number of rows in data frame, DF. Len df is the number of data points. Df log i selects the ith data point. Then, values is used to get that row as a numpy array. Now, subtract the mean vector from each data point to obtain the deviation vector, that is, the difference between the data point and the mean. Calculate the Mahalanobis distance using the Mahalanobis function in the SciPy spatial distance module. Diff is the vector of deviations between the data points and the mean. NP0 is like mean vector is the zero vector of the mean vector. And inv curve matrix is the inverse of the covariance matrix. The function uses these vectors and matrices as arguments to compute the Mahalanobis distance. Append the calculated Mahalanobis distances to the list Mahalanobis distances. Add the calculated Mahalanobis distances to data frame DF as a new column Mahalanobis distance. Then display the data frame. The results are as follows. We see that the Mahalanobis distance for ID2, which was thought to be an outlier, is the largest. From here, when we consider the correlation between age and tenure and are based on Mahalanobis distance, we can see that ID2 is the farthest away from the center of the dataset. Although the Mahalanobis distance is not a very large value, Given the values of age and tenure, this data point seems to be considered an outlier. However, 
Outlier direction using Mahala novice distance has several limitations. First, computing the covariance matrix requires a certain number of data points. Without a sufficient number of data points for the number of variables, it becomes difficult to reliably estimate the distribution and covariance of each variable. A small number of data points can make statistical estimation unstable and can lead to unreliable results in outlier detection and Mahalanobis distance calculations. Mathematically, if the number of data points is less than the number of variables, the inverse matrix cannot be computed. To compute the covariance matrix, the covariance for each variable must be computed. The dimension of this covariance matrix is the number of variables by number of variables. For the inverse of the covariance matrix to exist, the matrix must have full rank. If the number of data points n is less than the number of variables, the covariance matrix will not have full rank, and the inverse cannot be computed. In short, the rank of the covariance matrix is constrained to the smaller of the number of samples and the number of variables. If the number of data points is less than the number of variables, the rank of the covariance matrix will be less than the number of data points. For this reason, the matrix is singular, that is, non-invertible. Another problem is that, if the data distribution widely deviates from the normal distribution, the detection accuracy may be reduced. In addition, since outliers are included in the calculation of the covariance matrix, the covariance matrix is susceptible to outliers. When outliers are included, the variance may be overestimated or the shape of the distribution may be significantly distorted. If the Mahalanobis distance is calculated based on this distorted covariance matrix, the original outliers may be underestimated and indistinguishable from normal data. To solve these problems, we can use a method to calculate the Mahalanobis distance using a robust covariance matrix. Those methods are covered in the following sections. Let's go back to the formula for the Mahalanobis distance. This formula uses the inverse of the covariance matrix. But what happens when the inverse matrix does not exist? When the inverse matrix does not exist, the Mahalanobis distance cannot be calculated. When the determinant is zero, the inverse matrix does not exist. Therefore, when the determinant is zero, the Mahalanobis distance cannot be calculated. This happens when the variables are perfectly correlated. In multivariate outlier detection, Perfect correlation between variables means that there are no significantly deviated outliers. Therefore, if the determinant of the covariance matrix is zero, it indicates perfect correlation between the variables and provides evidence that no outliers exist. Thus, the fact that the covariance matrix does not have an inverse is not a problem. Rather, it can be used as evidence that no outliers exist. Let's mathematically show that the determinant of the covariance matrix becomes zero when the variables x1 and x2 are perfectly correlated. The determinant of the covariance matrix is calculated by this formula. When the two variables x1 and x2 are perfectly correlated, the relationship between them can be expressed by this equation. This equation shows that there is a linear dependency between x1 and x2. Therefore, when x1 and x2 are perfectly correlated, the covariance can be expressed in this way. Let's break down this equation. 
Since b is a constant, this part becomes zero. The covariance of x1 and x2 is the variance of x1, so the covariance between x1 and x2 can be expressed by this equation. Now, substitute the equation for x2 into this formula. Besides, from the equation for x2, the variance of x2 equals the variance of x1 multiplied by a squared. By plugging this in and simplifying the equation, we can show that the determinant becomes 0. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Your feedback is always appreciated.